Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Bay Area trumpeter, composer, and educator Ian Carey. We caught up with him on April 15, 2020 to talk about his latest 2020 CD, Fire in My Head, and this new COVID-19 world. He was born in Binghamton, New York, and educated in Northern California, Nevada, and New York City, and has lived and worked in the Bay Area since 2001. He's got a great road in jazz going, and he opens up about it. Enjoy. Thank you for taking a minute out, and... You know, not only to talk about the new album, but obviously these extraordinary times we're in, and uh, I appreciate it. Sure. Absolutely. Let's talk about your latest fire in my head, and I want to know kind of two parts here. You know, what was the approach to the album? It's it's a great album. It's a unique approach. But also, during this time of COVID-19, to have new material come out, it adds kind of a different pall on the whole thing. So talk to me a little bit about both of those notions so the genesis of the thing was um i mean i've been playing with this group for for over 10 years now um and we our previous album was called interview music and it was a long um it it was also a multi-part suite that i wrote um and i wasn't you know i i kind of came out of that wondering if i had had another one of those in me but um i ended up getting a, a grant from chamber music america to write a new piece um and the the previous one had not really had a theme, um, and I, I just generally normally didn't really work that way. I would tend to sort of write something and then kind of figure out what it's about after the fact. Um, but in this case, I, I decided that I wanted to sort of have a theme going in just to kind of see where that led. And I ended up, um, it was actually my wife's suggestion to, to, uh, to use anxiety as the theme since that's something that... I've always dealt with and um and it would be easy to kind of apply to um I mean as she said like my 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 music sort of already had that undercurrent so this would just be kind of further diving into that um and it certainly um you know the just the general uh national climate was was already playing into that uh for me anyway and most of my friends so um so yeah, I, and so I, I wrote it over a period of, a, of about a year, um, and we premiered it at uh, SF Jazz, and um, and then recorded it after that. Um, and not really having any sense that that. And and when we picked a date, it was just like, yeah, let's okay, this is a good, uh, you know, reasonable amount of time to do a promo campaign and so on. Um, and then as these developments started arising uh, regarding the virus and all that. Um, I sort of reached out to my label and to my publicist and said, you know, are we going to go ahead with this or what do you think? And and everybody, the consensus was just kind of like, well, you know, we've already sent out the advances. We've already, um, you know, things are in the works. And um, even though, uh, you know, most likely I'm not, my show is not going to happen, obviously. Um, but people are still listening to music and they're still, if anything, they have more time now to do that. Um, and it also felt even more topical now. Um, somebody made a comment. One of the tunes on the, one of the movements of the suite is called Internal Exile. Uh, and it's kind of about how, you know, people in, in, uh, uh, societies that are undergoing upheaval or challenging conditions can tend to kind of retreat into their own Selves and their own uh, hobbies and things. Um, well, and and uh, it's it's kind of viewed as sort of a negative thing in terms of detaching from the real world, you know. Um, but it's also something that, at least you know, me personally, and I think a lot of people who suffer from anxiety have to do it. Uh, you know, they might call it self care. You know, just to kind of stay sane. Um, and so there's this tune called Internal Exile, and and one somebody who who um, a uh, uh, writer who had gotten one of the advanced copies said, is it possible that he predicted the future? Because um, now we're all in internal exile anyway. So. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's topical, totally. Um, so you're originally from New York. And now, obviously, you're in, the, uh, you know, you're in California. So talk to me a little bit about your childhood and how jazz kind of became your life. Yeah, well, so I um, I was born in upstate New York in Binghamton, um, and um, my parents were from California, but they had taken a little, what they thought was going to be a couple of years, and ended up staying until I was a teenager. Um, and I played, uh, my family was, was 
active musically. Uh, my dad was a professional singer for, for a while, and uh, my mom uh, played guitar and piano and stuff. Thanks for the first choir. But, um, but uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really get serious until I moved to California to high school um, and you know, kind of got involved in the whole sort of high school jazz competitive uh, circuit. Um, for what it's worth, um, I, I often tell people it's kind of a like the world's biggest bait and switch because you're you know played at these sold out shows, the packed houses, and there's light shows and all that win trophies, and you're like, yeah, man, let's do with it. This, this is a great career. Um, and then of course after you graduate, it's absolute cricket. But um, uh, but anyway, um, but yeah, by by the time I got out of high school, I was I was hooked and. Um, um, and I was fortunate, actually, that when I, um, I lived near Sacramento uh, High School, there was a, a really, uh, not huge, but very active, very, very high, high quality of the jazz being there at the time. Uh, Dan Jesper Williams was living there, Bill Shillman, uh, my friend of Tom Perrin. Um, so, yeah, so I, I, after that, I went to college for a couple of years in, in Reno, um, studying mostly classical trumpet, and then transferred to the new school in New York, uh, finished up there, and then stayed in New York for about another seven years. So was it always going to be music and, and, uh, and jazz for you, or did you have other dreams? Um, that was the main idea. Um, and then I, I sort of started, um, I mean, after I got out of college, um, I was realizing that, like, you know, everybody else, all, all the other musicians in New York that didn't come from money, like I had to get a real job to, to live. You know, uh, I, I ended up deciding to start learning graphic design on the side as a as a way to kind of just uh, you know, potentially. It, it, I could imagine it as something I could do that would be somewhat creative. Uh, you know, to pay the bills and for the music, basically. Um, and then I ended up uh, after I not the to San Francisco for a summer sublet one year, I ended up getting offered a, 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 a graphic design job here. Um, so, and I was at that point, I was just ready for a change of scenery, and um, and so then for about another decade, I ended up doing doing that as well as music. Um, uh, and then, so now I do I split the time about half and half. Um, I would say probably on an annual basis, about half and half doing graphic work, doing music, um, which is, you know, uh, a good balance for me, and I, I enjoy both of them, but if I, if I, you know, if I was on a desert island, I would want to take my trumpet, but not necessarily my graphic software. So you're the one that does the art on the covers. Yeah, yeah. That's, I like that's, it. Um, oh, thank you. It looks very, it, it's very high end, so yeah, I, I dig it for sure. Hey, what was the first live jazz show you ever saw that made you think you wanted to really get in there and do it yourself? Well, the, yeah, believe it or not, the very first show um, that I can remember was um, when I was in elementary school. Oddly enough, uh, the great bassist, Flam Stewart, um, had, had retired to sing him. Um, and so he came and did a presentation at, at our elementary school when I was in probably third or fourth grade. And the, the only thing I remember about it was that he said, uh, I'll bet you I can play higher than a violin on my bass. Um, and, and then he proceeded to play up above the bridge and make these incredibly screeching high sounds. Um, so, so that was my, my first introduction. But, um, but yeah, I, I was lucky to have, uh, you know, my dad had a pretty good record collection. And so I grew up with lots of, like, Miles and Gillevins and, uh, modern jazz quartets and stuff around the house. Um, and then, yeah, probably I think when I really started to get, you know, decide that I really wanted to get serious was after um, we saw, you know, Maynard Ferguson came through town um, and did all of his high note antics. And at the time, that was sort of what I was excited about. And, oh, yeah, I'm going to do that. Um, so I'm artistically, I kind of, I think, grew a little out of that, you know, as much as I love Maynard. But, um, but yeah, I think that in terms of just, you know, really deciding that that I want to, to start working hard. That that was a big, uh, a big watershed. So let me ask you this: In this COVID nineteen world we're in, when musicians and fans come back, when there's live music again, what re- what realizations do you hope we have when we come back? What kinds of new ideas or or, or, or 
something profound that we feel from this experience when we come back? Well, one of the things that's kind of been, to me, um, inspiring is sort of how I think this, the music community has kind of come together um, and supported each other uh, during this time. And in terms of people just doing, you know, watching each other's happy hour shows and chipping some, chipping in some Venmo tips and um, buying each other's albums and and I mean it's stuff that people were doing anyway but uh, now that this is the only uh, outlet um, it seems like that to me there's I'm feeling a sense of community even more than there was before and and I think um, you know there's always going to be people who kind of view it as a zero-sum game but um, so I think I think people are are just getting driven home how much you know we as a obviously a larger community, but definitely the music community is, and and I would say probably all creative artists are sort of in this together. That now the the issue um, that kind of strikes me and, and this is when I remember, you know, sort of towards the beginning of this thing people were sharing a lot of stuff like, Oh, go buy other people's albums on Bandcamp and um, and stuff like that and, and support musicians and and I saw lots of people sharing that and saying oh yeah I'm, I'm going to do that and almost all the people sharing it uh, participating seem to be musicians and I said you know this is really great um, but we really have to get some non-musician people in on this otherwise we're just moving around the same disappearing pile of money you know, from yeah. one musician to another um, yeah. and so that's that's something that I, I hope um, I hope that people who are fans and listeners um, kind of start to realize that that the the music the music that they enjoy and the musicians who they uh, appreciate can't just do this as a hobby, right? Um, or if they do, it's not going to be the same. Um, and that you know, for for at least past decade, the sources of income for musicians have just been getting smaller and smaller and smaller with streaming and all, and, all, and the, moving away from CDs and all that. Um, so I'm hopeful that, I mean, obviously everyone is going to be focusing on their own challenges, but I'm hopeful that um, that maybe the audience is a little bit more cognizant of how important it is for them to continue showing up and buying music and supporting artists um, beyond just a little insular community. My final question to you is this. Everyone has a perception of you, your family, your friends, your fans, your students, but you're living your life. Who do you think you are? Hmm. <laughs> well, let me, let me answer that with a little anecdote where um, one of my former teachers uh, was in town um, and we had lunch and, uh, and I sort of gave him a kind of a big long spiel about how I, and this was that, well, I still had a, um, a design day job and was, was doing music sort of on breaks from that. Um, and was basically kind of explaining him, explaining to him how that situation had ended up and, you know, how I was kind of trying to deal, deal with it the best that I could. And, and he said, you know, I, I meet a lot of former students and they always have some kind of apology about, you know, why they're not, you know, living the dream more. Um, and he said, you know, I, and he talked about himself. He was saying, you know, I, and I re- realized at some point, oh, I'm never going to be able to play with Miles Davis. But that, that was, you know, sort of been crushing to me based on what my youthful expectations were. But, but, and saying to me, like, you know, I look at what you're doing, like you're working, you're living, you're producing work and art, playing and getting out there and, and I do that as successful. Um, and so I try to kind of, that's the approach that I kind of think, like, you know, there's no one true path to being a musician. Um, uh, so I think I I followed whatever me- meandering road that has got me here. Um, you know, I'm still trying to do my best. Very nice. Well, hey, Ian, thank you for taking some time out. Uh, odd time in, in our, our world and I appreciate you talking about the music and what's going on and uh, the survival of jazz. 
Thanks very much for, for asking. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest cats in the Bay Area, New York City, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Ian for his time, music, and stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.